Symmetry, the ideas of symmetry led Galileo to another very important aspect of motion, which is actually a bigger surprise than the one that we talked about, namely everything drops at the same uh, rate. <clears throat> and this idea uh, that he discovered, this, this law that he discovered, is uh, got a shorthand word called inertia. Okay? And inertia, of course, in your Simple language means laziness, okay, you, you, you have inertia, you don't want to get up in the morning, etc., etc., right? So, it's, it's, uh, there's a parallel to that meaning. <clears throat> so, let's go back to what one of Aristotle's so-called discoveries were. You know, he said that horizontal motion is unnatural, okay, the circular motion in the heavens is natural, and the natural motion on earth is either up or down, depending on what the element is. But horizontal motion, he uh, clearly said by observation must come to a stop you know so if you have an object that you launch horizontally you know it will it will eventually come to a stop <clears throat> and so according to Aristotle all horizontal motion must come to a stop and so this picture describes Aristotle's physics <clears throat> now Galileo uh, could see that happen all the time <clears throat> but he observed a symmetry, an asymmetry, or a symmetry in the behavior of falling objects, and he questioned what was happening at horizontal motion but on the basis of the symmetry that he found. So when he was doing his experiments on the inclined plane, he saw that the object accelerates if the plane is pointing down. Right? Right. <clears throat> if the inclined plane is pointing down, the object is speeding up. Right? If the inclined plane is pointing up, then, then the object slows down, okay, and comes to a rest, right? Okay, so here it speeds up, speeds up. Now, let's re redraw Aristotle's picture, right? Aristotle's picture says that when you have no incline, the object will come to a stop, which is the same as this picture. And so, so Galileo is saying, wait a minute, why should an object come to a stop if there's no upward incline? It should keep going. Right, so there, there you have Galileo's thinking in terms of symmetry, and then from the symmetry you have this leap of thought that even though you never see this, what should really happen is the object should just keep moving forward forever and ever. And what makes it stop is something else, right? What's that? You all know about it. It's friction, just like air resistance plays a role in vertical motion. So the natural motion of objects that are launched horizontally is inertial motion, namely, they want to keep going the way they've been set in motion. If the, guy, if the guys are in stop, they want to stay in stop. If the guys are in motion, in uniform speed, they just want to stay that way. So if you reduce the friction and launch the, launch the object, it'll kind of keep going and going and going and going. That if you get on a skating rink and put on ice skates, then you've reduced the friction between your feet and the floor and then some, somebody pushes you, then you just keep going. Okay, that's the fundamental law, that horizontal motion goes on forever. Okay? <clears throat> just barely touch it and kick it toward Abby. Barely push it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> Do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, now turn it off, Abby. Oops, never mind. <laughs> okay, now turn it off and just barely push it. Okay. <laughs> now, Galileo arrived at that in also a slightly different way. And that was, again, based on this demonstration, <clears throat> which is that if you have a, an object that falls a certain height, right, then when it climbs back up on, that, uh, on another incline, but climbs to the same height as before, it will have to go further. 
this way. It'll have to go further, right? So if you launch this object, and when it comes back to the same height as before, the distance it'll travel will be further. So now, if I lower this incline, if I make it less incline, it will have to go this far to come to the same height, right? And if I make that incline even less, it'll have to go this far to come to that same height, right? So now comes his, again, leap of thought from extrapolation. If I make the incline <coughs> completely flat, if I make the incline completely flat, then the object will have to go infinitely far to get to this height. It will never get to that height, right? So there again is another derivation of the law that once you launch an object at a certain speed, it will keep on going forever and ever because it's trying to get back to this height and it doesn't, it's not able to get back to this height. So that's the alternate derivation, okay? <clears throat> okay, so the law of inertia is that a ball launched onto a horizontal plane must continue to move forever along the horizontal plane. So what Galileo did is he thought away the resistance of friction and air as before. And once again, that was idealization. <clears throat> All right. So again, if we think back, you know, where did Aristotle go wrong? Aristotle go, went wrong because he trusted too much in what the senses told him, and he just took it literally. And this is exactly what Plato and Parmenides had warned. And they had said that if you place too much emphasis on the sensory evidence, then you will miss the underlying laws. And that's exactly what uh, the universal truth you know, had escaped Aristotle, and that's the warning that, uh, that uh, Plato had given. Okay, so now, a question for you. This is a really com not so much common sense question, but a common experience question. Uh, which of the following behavior are related to Galileo's law, which we just discussed? Has anybody jumped off a moving bus? <laughs> what do you have to do when you jump off a moving bus? You got to keep running, right? So certainly the first one is correct, and you know the second one is correct, right? Now the third one is, is correct, but not relevant to the law below. It's a different law. So it's not all of the above. It's E, which is most people got. Very good. So here's, here's the famous picture. All right, you got this guy moving on the car, and he jumps off the car, but he refuses to run, and the result is this, okay? Now, why, why is this the result? It's because the car launched his body moving at uniform velocity, and when he got off the car, he's still moving at uniform velocity, except his feet have contacted the ground and stopped moving. So his feet will stay there, but his body will move forward, right? And that's why you get thrown forward if somebody hits the brakes too fast. You know, too quickly, without warning, you get thrown forward. <clears throat> That's why you need seat belts. Object, your car will suddenly stop or slow down. Because of inertia, your body will want to stay moving at whatever speed it was moving before the accident. If you're not wearing a seat belt, this means you will hit a windshield. The seat belt provides, provides a force to stop your body's forward motion. You should think now also what would happen if you are at rest and somebody comes and uh, hits you from behind. Okay? Think about that. The second safety device in your car is a headrest. When your car is hit from behind, the car is suddenly pushed forward. Your head will want to stay still, but your body will be pushed forward by the seat. This causes your head to feel like it is snapping back. Your head is actually staying still because of inertia, while the rest of your body is being pushed. Your headrest pushes your head forward with your body so that you don't suffer from whiplash. Mm -hmm.